go over the my macro fundamentals because I think there's some interesting stuff going on right now. Okay, cool. All right. We can check it against what I think. Sweet. Okay, so first let's look at the uh, DXY because it's quite in interesting what's going on there. Um, on the daily, well, let's look at the weekly first. I haven't seen the weekly for a while. Okay, so the weekly last week, very strong. Buyers in control. Uh, last week's candle. This week's not over yet and still buyers in control as well. Still overall downtrend but short term uptrend. So let's draw our trend lines based on the weekly and let's see where it's at. Okay, so based on the weekly already, what we can see is that there is a, uh, a nice breakout of um, secondary downtrend line right here. So this could have room to at least go to about the 82 area. This is based on the weekly. However, it needs to, of course, break uh, certain supply levels. So this will be one supply level right here, about the 80, 69. And then the next area would be around about here as well. So there's a few levels that needs to break before it can go to about the 82, but there is already a um, significant break out there of the secondary downtrend line. So let's look at the daily chart. So on the daily chart, what we can see here is that yesterday buyers were in control. Create a lower low right here, but in the end, buyers um, uh, one today and create a higher high within this range of candles here. So bulls are back in control, the breakout there as well uh, of the downtrend line. So um, okay, supply levels. There's also supply levels here that needs to be break to be broken about the 80, 58, 80, 60 area before it can go further to the upside. Any questions with the DXY? No, that's very good. Thank you. No. It's no questions. No questions. Okay, let's look at um, reports. Reports today. Um, okay, so this is Australian time, so in an hour and 15 minutes time will be the Swiss reporting, CPI, quite a major report there. And um, ECOFIN meetings for the Eurozone is quite important as well. Uh, pound CPI. Uh, is reporting so it's more. There's another major one for the Swiss with uh, Chairman uh, Jordan, who he will be speaking. And then another one for the pound again, the uh, BOE inflation letter. And later on tonight, let's see if there's any U.S. ones. Uh, Canada will be reporting. ECB, uh, Mr. Drag is going to speak as well, so that's going to be very important. 2:30 a.m. my time. And U.S. ones, there's really not much. There's medium ones, federal budget at 6 a.m. That may affect the U.S. market, but that's about it. So there's not, nothing major in the U.S. market, but a few on Eurozone, pound, and the Canadian dollar. So just have to be careful with those. Um, so that's, that's what we're going you know, to watch out for with the news with regards to world indexes. Let's see what's going on there. Okay, so with the Dow, there was a bit of a drop, not much, about 21 points for the Dow, S&P just 0.92, so very small drops, very small retracement even with the NASDAQ. In the Eurozone, is a bit mixed, uh, FTSE was up in the CAC, the Euro stocks, there was a um, bit of a drop there, and then the, um, the DAX was also, so it's not much of a drop, so a little bit of retracement. In the Asian market, what we can see here is the Nikkei actually, um, Went up about, um, over one point, nearly close to two percent. Um, the Hang Seng uh, was also up. The only one that dropped was the um, ASX 200. So it's just a very small drop there. If we look at uh, the Dow, just look at US 30 on the daily. Okay, so pretty. So they're. Um, Sellers are supporting this, um, are resisting this uh, 
supply error right here. So, okay, 14,000, I think the highest that it's made was this candle right here, 14,023, that's the highest that it's, it's done so far. It doesn't want to go, they don't want to break this, but they also don't want to fall further either. So, there's something going on uh, with the, the market. So, it's really trading or ranging between two points. It's actually around about the equilibrium point at the moment uh, on the daily. So, yeah, they're just trading within this, within this range. We did a breakout of the, either the supply or the demand area for this to drop for a, uh, the retracement or continuation to the upside. But it's very tight, just really trading within this range at this point. Um, let's look at the weekly very quickly, see what happened uh, last week. Okay, so last week was a very nice doji. Um, so if it finishes like this, and it's it's also very overbought as well, possible method two here that may form. So if it does, then very nice correction to about the 13,500 uh, since um, suppliers are resisting the supply area above the 14,000. Okay, any questions with the uh, US 30, the Dow Jones? No, I have no questions. No, no questions. Okay. No okay. Uh, futures. Let's just look at futures. Forgot to look into futures. Futures. Not much uh, at this point. Just a 26-point drop at this point. So it could change as well. Very small as well with the S&P and the Nasdaq. So just have to wait and see what's going on later on. Okay. What do you want me to do, Anthony? Okay, um, so do you have any trades open right now? I do, but they're just con continuation. So what I've got is the Euro dollar, and I also have the Euro yen. Uh, what I did is I, um, okay, what I saw, okay, I'll, which one do you want me to go first, Euro yen or Euro dollar? Uh, let's start with the, the dollar. The Euro dollar. Okay, so let's look at the daily chart. Okay, I had a um, one-third position in from uh, when I went in at about the 13080 price area. And uh, what I saw here is that um, I think the trade was last week when it was like this before this drop right here. I saw it having uh, creating the higher lows right here. But also, also know that it needs to break the supply area before it will continue to the upside. My stop is around this last low right here and I decided to actually leave the trade in and uh, and also looking at it looks like it's stabilizing within this um, uh, price level right here actually retraced to the 50 percent between this high and this low and um, and I've got my notes here is this going to be the higher low so mm -hmm. From yesterday's candle and and also the day before, it actually created a higher higher low. The highs are still lower, so the high here is 34.283. This one is 34.301. So the high here is higher compared to this one here, but the lows are are um, higher. So if it finishes like this with another higher low, then I'm looking at adding again to my position uh, mm -hmm. to ride it to the upside. Since overall, it's on an uptrend. I see. And uh, I mean, so we were looking at the do the, the the dollar index, and uh, it, it seems like it could go, it could continue to go to the upside for a cup for a little bit. And I guess you're going to be, I guess, just holding this position for now. And uh, it it might it looks like it could reverse at the eighty fifty eight level. It could, you, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's early to during the day yet. It's already created a high, high, high low as well. But it's also running out of steam, so it may go if it breaks this levels right here because there's a really big empty space right here, right to go to about above the 82, uh, 82.25 area. Um, and if it doesn't want to continue to the downside because the the lows, I mean the highs. This is still a lower high compared to this high right here, but if it breaks this high, then there could be a proper change of trend to go to the outside here. Of course, it needs to change, um, break that high as well. I see. To go there. 
Okay, well, it's it's worth it's worth the risk, I suppose, for what is it, the setup. So basically, we 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 have kind of a setup for the euro dollar right now. It looks like. Yes, there is a setup for because it's on an uptrend, um, and the the low. This is a still a higher low compared to that low here based on the daily, and there could be some room for this to create a, another higher low, higher high I should say before it may can drop to the downside. Okay, and you're going to wait for the end of day for this one. Yes. I yes, um, I will wait for the because there's the ECB as well. The reporting on the ECB. Don't know. It could be again another choppy day um, today, since the the ECB will be Mr. Draghi will be speaking, and it will affect the market. I see. Okay, um, we can continue. Oh, actually, one more question is um, as far as if you were to add another position, um, I'd be curious. Um, you don't have to tell me like the maybe like a percentage uh, would be useful to me like just to know like cool. okay how I how I set my my position I go with position sizing so I first identify where my stop error is going to be so if my stop error is if I if I'm happy with the actual low say for example this is the low that I'm going to take uh, on the bid area because I'm going long um, 132.63 minus the spread, so it will be around say 132.50. So I will enter that. I've got my own calculator that I use because I uh, mainly trade with CMC markets, so different with FXCM, mm -hmm. um, and and I would uh, calculate it and and buy. Now the risk is a lot low, um, lower compared to when I bought it from here, because the risk then is quite uh, wide right with this one here. Now the risk here is a lot lower um, since it's very close to this low here. So I would go by position size, take this and then enter with um, the X amount of positions that I'm happy to enter to go along. So basically I'm willing to lose X amount of dollars based on this top um, that I identified here. Interesting. Okay. Very so my risk is still three percent, so so oh, my risk, risk yeah my risk is between three and six percent. Um, so um, with this position here, I'm actually uh, the, the one that I, I identified or I entered here was a two percent. So I'm going to enter another two percent. And and if here. if this were to go in the direction that you want it to go, what are you targeting mm -hmm. right now? Okay, if um it goes to the the areas that I would like to go first is I would uh, draw my FIB retracement. Okay, so my first target will be around about the 34.89 or 35 area. Uh, probably target the 50% here and then the um, the other one that I've got uh, that I bought from this area, I would go on the longer upper time frame, which is the weekly, and I would go to the next supply area. So the next supply area will be around about the 138 price areas. It's actually too okay. far now. Sorry about the um, yeah 137, 138 area. Cool. Um, that that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, we can continue with the euro yen now. Okay, any feedback from Ray? Or? Uh, no, pretty good. Okay. Okay. Uh, euro yen. All right. The euro yen. Now, the reason why I entered this is. Um, I basically saw it still, as we know, that it's still on an uptrend. And yesterday, buyers are very strong. It created a what we call the bullish rising three pattern. It's on a an uptrend, so a bullish rising three is quite strong to the upside. So what what my intention of the trade is would be a um, an overnight or a short term trade, probably two three days, um, because. It's in a, a, at a supply area. 
Uh, also looking at, so I'm, I'm basically trading the continuation to the upside. Um, if we look at the weekly chart as well, it doesn't have enough evidence that it will drop as yet because this is a good um, supply area right here, but the best supply areas will be here. So it has potential of going to about the 130, 133 price area before it may um, correct to the downside. So if we can see right here, it's very strong um, supply areas here. It's also strong right here as well, but it already broke it. And so the next level of supply now will be here on about the 127, uh, 95, 128, um, which is not quite strong. The strongest would be in this level right here, which is about above the 130, 131, 132. So between 130 and 133. Okay, so this one uh, is rough, maybe like a couple days then? This is a short, relatively short term? Yes, I yes. See. So, yeah, so if it breaks this, the high right here of last week, which is the 127.71, if it creates a new higher high, uh, this one will be very strong and will not hesitate to test these areas right here, these uh, areas between the 130, 128 and 133 price areas because that's the, very, the next um, very strong supply area. Cool. So, so this this um, correction right here might must be might be a, just a small correction and then uh, probably further continuation to the upside. Since um, overall, if you even look at the monthly, um, let's go to the monthly. Monthly, look at last month, very, very strong. So, and yes, the next supply will be around here. So it's not long to go, another three, 400 pips to the upside before it may decide to stabilize within this area and then do it, that nice correction that, that we're waiting for. If it does, then yeah, another nice correction to the downside to, you know, to at least touch the eight and the 10. Any other questions? No. Um, I'd like to spend the next uh, 20 minutes. Um, let's pick a couple pairs and then uh, we'll try to identify any setups and uh, we will share it with each other and evaluate it. Okay, cool. Sounds good. So plan. Let's do. Well, uh, why don't you tell me which, which pairs that you want to cover and then uh, I can pick, pick two pairs too. Let's see if there's anything. Or we can just look for one. Ah, that, yeah, that I do. Actually, Euro Pound is the one I would like to talk about. Okay, um, so we can cover yeah. that. Now. Okay, I'll cover Euro Pound. The reason why I like Euro Pound, I'll just remove this. I'll take a look at the, the Kiwi yeah. and okay. the... Let's see if the Swiss has anything. You are the Swiss? The dollar Swiss. Oh, dollar Swiss? Okay. I'll uh, cover the, the uh, Euro Swiss. All right. So um, the Euro Pound, the Euro Pound is on an uptrend, creating higher lows, higher highs. And right here, um, it's doing a some form of correction. So. If I draw a fib, take this low to this high, it's actually fulfilled all those levels. So we'll move it now to here. Just look at the lows. Okay, so this is still higher. Okay, so I can move it here. Okay, so it retraced to um, not quite the 62% and then now it's uh, heading towards the 
uh, to the upside or continuation. So this could be a new higher low before it may continue and create new higher highs there. Nice M1 as well, higher lows, higher highs within this range of candles, buyers in control. Another one right here um, doing a bit of a breather today, still early during the day, although there's also the uh, reporting for the pound and the eurozone. Um, however, we can already see that the pound is quite is a, a little bit more weaker than the euro, and this could be a uh, nice one of a trade to continue to the upside. So, uh, if you trade this, take this trade, um, you can always take um, this fib retracement level as with our targets. Now, um, the stop would be the low of this candle right here since this is the last swing low. Uh, so, plus the uh, minus the spread. And now the 38% is already taken, so it's not, not far to the 50%. I'll probably take um, the next supply, so this probably will be um, two or three day trade up to this uh, supply level. If it breaks this, then the one third will, probably will be a, a nice ride to the upside. And we can also look at the weekly to see where the next supply level will be. So, let's look at this. This will be a very good supply area, but the 8780 area needs to break the high of this first though, uh, which is the 8717. So, so this will be, I guess, our target areas if we want to leave the one third because it has a potential of um, perhaps heading towards the, to the upside, creating a new higher high before it may correct itself as well. Okay. Cool. Uh, can we look at the four-hour time frame for this one? Sure. Okay. Um, so the question I had was, uh, when you define your stop on the daily time frame, it was, uh, well, I guess it would be, it would still be accurate with the, uh, the four hour right there. Okay. Um, so if you are thinking of day trading this. Right. But it would be overnight too, wouldn't it? Even on the. Yeah, you get. Yes. So if I was to day trade this, um, I'll just see where it's retraced to. Hmm. It may retrace for a better price since it's also ever bought at the moment. It may retrace to the 38% level and then go to the upside. And my stop would be this area here. Okay, cool. And then with your targets, you basically have the bigger fib. But that's already at the fifty percent. Um, move it there. Or that one there. So it's basically up to your thirty-eight percent. So you have two these these two levels as your targets as well, or mm -hmm. just supply areas. Very cool. Okay. Um, yeah, I have nothing else for the euro pound. No other questions. Okay. Cool. Um, we got some pretty good setups this week, the beginning of this week then. Yeah, it does look like it. The question is going to be if the uh, the dollar index continues to go up, how is that going to affect the uh, the euro? 
Um, that's that's the only thing I'd be curious to see. Well, it won't affect the euro pound. It will affect the euro dollar. Right. Uh, but not the euro pound. And it won't affect the euro Swiss either. If you're looking cool. at euro Swiss to trade. Okay, this one here is also a very good M1 trade because level of demand, higher low, higher high, retracement right here. Actually, now is a good time to enter for a swing trade to the upside. So, this is one of my favorites as well. Swing trade to the upside. Um, how how far? Okay, so if you want to trade this, I always go by the fib retracement. Oh, all the way up there. Yep. So <laughs> this will be my levels. Okay, if fifty percent or sixty-two percent for your first two. You can also have that as well. Now, if you if it's a day trade. Okay, day trades are also creating um, higher highs, higher lows as well. Nice correction right here, continuation. Um, okay, so if you have also three levels of um, retracements, but the bigger one would be from here to that low there. Okay, so it will be levels, that will be the ultimate level. Next one is here, it's already basically nearly fulfilled that. That's the other one there, so there's two levels here that we'll take. And then you can have one third to ride. And then the last one will be that one there. Okay. clean up my uh, trend line. So if you can see right here as well, there's also a clear breakout of the um, secondary downtrend line. It's now nice empty space as well to fill, fill up to just above the 124.20 area. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, like, uh, looks like I've I've definitely had my fill of uh, for the daily setup, so I have my plans for what I want to do. And uh, I was taking a look at the 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 euro yen and the dollar yen, or I'm sorry, the euro dollar. So I'm going to give those two a shot too. Um, okay. Cool. I'm gonna. Well, I guess while I have you, <laughs> how about we do the, the Kiwi and the, the Aussie dollar? <laughs> okay, let's look at the Aussie dollar. Okay, the Aussie dollar is very is quite weak. Um, I believe there may be more to the downside here. Um, yesterday, sellers were very much in control. This candle right here was a doji or a um, to me it's an indecision candle even if it created a higher high but it created a lower low downtrend broke that low right here and still continuation of the downtrend as well. Now I've got this uptrend line uh, drawn here if we go to the weekly chart it's got a bigger picture you can see it clearly because I can see a breakout of the uptrend line. So that's the last um, uptrend where I, I drew it from. So this is where my line size for this is will be the primary. That will be the secondary right there. And it's also clear that there's already a breakout of this um, uptrend line here. 
Uh, best area of demand will be around here, around about the 101.48, 101.50 area. Very strong right there. And um, I, there's also, on the stochastics, there's still room to drop. There's still no crossover uh, on the oversold area. So I can see this continuing to the downside. I wouldn't even touch it yet. Okay, so let's look at the daily. The daily is still creating lower highs, lower lows, and still no stabilization. Could be some form of stabilization here before it may continue to the downside, but so as we can see here as well, the best uh, levels of demand is def definitely around these areas, one of the 101.50 price area. is areas of uh, demand levels. It may sell at 102, but it may also drop to about the 101.50 area. So it's more to the downside in my opinion. I see. Any? Did you want me to continue to the four-hour chart, or? Uh, no, I think I've seen enough of this one. Um, okay, let's look at Kiwi. I had Kiwi is a little bit different. I'll just um, go to the weekly chart. Just uh, have a look at the overall picture. Okay, so the Kiwi had a break. This is my original one, downtrend line right here. I'll also draw my uptrend line as well. That'll be our primary, secondary, Okay, that'll be our tertiary uptrend line. Okay, so it's on an uptrend, high lows, higher highs. And if you can see here, this high, yes, of uh, last week's candle was 84.96. Create a new higher high. So let's draw our um, supply level right here. Okay, so it's higher compared to these highs here, but still lower compared to that high here and that high there as well. Um, it's also creating higher lows here as well. Um, tried to break it on this, this week's candle, but the week's not over yet. So, so it's a little bit stronger than the Aussie. We can draw our um, demand levels here. And this is our supply levels here. Okay, so um, on based on the weekly, sellers are still in control, but with higher lows. So this low here, it, it's not over at 83.108, So the the low of this week's candle is still high compared to that. But we'll see at the end of the week to see if it breaks that or probably rebounds back to the supply area, but it's created a higher high and still higher lows. Could be a new higher low before it may continue to the upside there on the daily chart. Daily chart, we can just see clear, um, it's just ranging really between two uh, demand and supply areas. So it's trading within these demand levels and this supply area. So it's, re it's really within here. So if we can see, it's sort of at the equilibrium area as well. Um, yesterday, sellers were in control, but buyers push it back up, um, still within um, this higher low area. However, it's also indecision because the, the highs here are lower, so it's in a, a um, 
symmetrical triangle, they really need to decide whether to go to the upside or break to the downside. I see. So at the moment, it's um, a higher low but lower high. So I'd, I'd wait for a proper breakout of this symmetrical, small symmetrical triangle that we can see here. So it's a small. It's also running out of steam. Yeah, it's also running out of steam in an area of uh, level of demand as well. Um, in my opinion, I, I wouldn't touch it yet. Okay. Um, so um, you prefer not to go in right when it starts to stabilize, but when, uh, like, not just on this this one, but just say uh, on the euro, um, the euro dollar, uh, if on the, on the daily chart, if it's, uh, um, you like to, pre you, pre you would prefer to wait on the stabilization because I know I had this issue where I might have gone in, a, you know, maybe like, I think it was a euro yen or something a while ago or I might have jumped the gun a little earlier, but uh, you, for what you see right here, you would prefer to wait, like, I don't know, stabilization, it, you kind of see it as something that you should wait a few days into, or um, if if this thing starts to move in a certain direction, like y you would prefer to just go, go in then than to just, I guess, put a position in right now kind of a thing? Uh, the reason why I'm hesitant here to enter a new another position is because of the ECB. There's major reports. So, um, I know it's very small risk, but I'm, I'm already losing from this trade right here. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather wait and not lose any more um, and, and wait for the, the, the report and trade at the end of the day. So, so let's just say this would just move to the upside. Uh, like where would the price have to kind of move to to kind of, I guess, for okay. you to... Uh, Take I take my clues from the lower time frames. I take my clue from four hour, from our four hour chart. So if you can see right here, sellers are still in control, creating lower highs, lower lows, back to this level of demand, and sellers are still in control. Um, and then I look at the one hour chart as well. And this is where I would get my best price. And I would, I, Ideally, I would like to see some form of stabilization here, and I'd like to see buyers to be in control more. So if it was something like this, you know, like this, with a higher low, or even here, like that, then, um, and it's stabilizing, then I would go in. But at the moment, I can st still see sellers in control, so I won't go in. Cool. Uh... Yeah, I guess that concludes it for me, for, for Ann. Uh, JP, is, were there any trades that you were taking a look at or thinking about going into? Or, uh, you seem pretty uh, uh, so Actually, I have a question for you. Uh, do you like to trade on the hourly charts here and there, like on the given occasion? Is that for me or for Ann? Or... That for you? No, no, not, not really, no. Preference for me is um, probably along the short-term swing trade or swing overnight trade, um, not not the hourly chart per okay. se. So, so the driver for me would be the daily chart, but um, to get in at the best price using multiple time frame, it would be the one hour. Cool. All right. Um, we covered the the euro dollar and the euro yen. Um, we did the Aussie and the Kiwi, yeah. and uh, we did the, the Euro Swiss. Um, did did you care to? I'm supposed to be running this class today, so um, I'm gonna have to ask you to uh, go over a couple couple charts and see if you can come. Sure. Ronaldo, could you pair, uh, pass the presentation to JP, please?
So anyone in particular, or do you want me to just start with the European, perhaps? Uh, we oh, did the euro pound. Yeah, uh, you can try the pound yen. I think we didn't do that one yet. Thank you, Anne. I uh, put the pressure on her today. Had to do no that. worries. <laughs> That's fine. So pound yen. So daily chart. Uh, I'll just go to the week because it's the start of the week. So. Um, uh, Last week, higher highs, higher lows. So overall, it's been a, an uptrend, quite steep. A um, bit of a gap between the eight and the ten, so that's about four hundred or so pips um, to the eight and the ten. Um, overall uptrend. So I'll just put a trend line in here. So as you can see, it's quite steep here as well. Um, So it's quite steep, so if and when it does retrace, it will do so uh, at the same velocity as it's going up as well. So right now it's bulls in charge, a high low, but not a high high just yet. It hasn't taken out that high at 149, 148, but it is overbought. So uh, that doesn't mean anything, but however, it could be in line for a retracement. Um, if it does in fact retrace, then obviously that's about 300 bits to the downside to the first port of call, which is the 38.2. Um, on the daily chart, uh, actually going back to your weekly chart, uh, your your trend line, your uptrend line, um, I have to kind of. Uh, I see. Oh, yeah, so yeah, is, is that what? That's what you decided to draw like that. Yeah, so that's one, that's two, it's cut across for that one, and then it's just, um, it came down, touched it, and now it's just bouncing back off. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, please, uh, please continue with daily. Okay, daily chart. So, um, what's happening on the daily now? So we've got sellers in control. Lower high, however, it is not high or low at the moment. Uh, hasn't taken out that high just yet, as um, previously discussed. So it's just hovering around that supply level around the 147.20 area. Uh, a bit of divergence on stochastics as well. Um, so, and that's that Fibonacci on the weekly chart. I'll just clean that up. So that's that point there. That's from the weekly. So that's 144.47. But on the daily chart, um, we have that. So so that's the previous low. Oh, that's high. That's high is one forty seven. One forty seven ninety and that high one forty seven ninety five. So that's the high there. Hasn't taken it out that one yet. So we got 147.20, so it's still a number of pips down here to 38.2, which also is that uptrend line that was drawn from the weekly chart. But I'll just clean that one up there and touch that. So a bit of a void to that uptrend line as well, if it does in fact retrace. Um, right now, so it's in control, stabilizing. So it could be a stabilization correction, continuation to the uptrend, or stabilization correction to the downside. So, um, on a lower time frame, just do with me while I throw my phone out the window. Um, <laughs> in uh, the four hour, <laughs> oh, uh, the four hour. So we had a big push up by the buyers over the last few hours, as uh, corrected itself to the eight and the ten, and with the sellers, and now the buyers are trying to push the price back up. It's just hovering around that eight and ten at the moment. So a bit of a congestion in phase over here, higher highs, but also and high lows, but also lower high as it hasn't taken out that one just yet, once 47.90 um, on the lower time frame. So there we can see that's a nice supply area, so prices just hovering in an area and then sellers took over and created prices back down. Uh, a bit different on the one hour, it's an uh, M3 to the downside and it's crossing out in the 10. Uh, and sellers pushing the price back down. 
So <clears throat> didn't they get that high previously? What was that one forty seven ninety? So it's a bit uh, a bit of stabilization, a bit of correction. It's just um, going sideways at the moment. I mean, as you can see, it's the cat sticks are at equilibrium as, as well. So it seems like they're just waiting for some form of direction before it takes off. But um, it's just hovering around that supply area as well. Yeah, even on the daily chart. So looking to um, looking to short as it's um, lower high. Um, sellers in control. So looking to short this one very soon. Um, so what, what is very soon? Um, because my, my driver is the daily chart. Um, so, so, hang on, so the daily chart's the driver, so it's still got a number of hours um, to go before this price closes. So anything can happen. This can obviously shoot up to the upside. It could stay the same, but um, as it is right now, it's looking quite good. See, it's a nice little tight little, little bar. So a lot of indecision, the buyers and sellers fighting it out. Um, sellers are in control now because it's actually a red candle. It's a lower high. Uh, it's a high low, however, um, but it's not uh, pushing up to the upside anymore. So a bit of divergence as well in stochastics. Um, a lot of room to move to this uptrend line or also uh, the Fibonacci retracement levels. Uh, there's even the next supply level, 144.70. Uh, there's one near 146.50 as well. Mm -hmm. So there's more opportunity for this to go to the downside. So I just want to see how it closes before entering this position. To, to go short. To go short. Correct. Interesting. Correct. And uh, if you were to go short on this one, your uh, stop would be at the very where you started drawing the fib right up there. Right up there. See, that's the high. So let's put a little on that. So that was like one forty-seven. I think it was ninety-five from memory. Yeah, one forty-seven ninety-five. Okay. And one forty-seven. So that's a fifty pip. That's quite quite tight, and especially doing on swing trade or daily charts, especially the pound yen, I mean they can take that in five seconds flat. So just depending on how conservative or how much wiggle room I want to give this, so let's just go to a higher time frame, see where the next level of supply is. So the next one, horizontal line, see that's the next swing higher. Just around there before it turns out. So that's this next swing, and that's at 150. So that's uh, 300 pips. Like depending on your lot size and how you can do that, that's um, a 270 pip stop loss, which is quite it's quite big. But at the same time, considering the pair we're consulting, easy that could hit that quite easily. So if you want it really tight, you use a high here. If you want a, a little bit more wiggle room um, to let the trade do its thing, then obviously. Uh, move this up a little bit higher, perhaps the next swing, or even the previous high, which was 140 or 20. So it's up to your discretion which one. Right. Um, if if you were to define the stop loss for 270 pips, uh, what would the upside be to that for if you were to short it? It would it wouldn't be. I mean, is that something that you guys like to do, like uh, for especially like let's just take this example. Um, it's a pound yen, uh, and if we were to short it um, to what we said it was, it was uh, the sixty-one percent or something, or I'm sorry, the thirty-two percent from here. It would be. Uh, it looks like it could be like two hundred seventy pips, I suppose. Okay, well, I guess that makes sense now. All right, but one forty-seven thirty, one forty-four sixty. Oh, I'm sorry. So, how many uh, how many pips would that be? It would be. So that would be uh, one hundred and seventy, which is the first one. And then and then the uh, stop would be at two hundred seventy something. Uh, if you were to use the weekly. That's up to you. I mean, you can use right. this one right here. But have, have you have you do do you do that a lot like? Uh, like I mean, in your, for for I guess, I, I mean, I'm, I, there's a lot of factors to be considered. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, if I were to trade against a trend, I, that's one thing that I'm kind of um, uh, starting to become a little bit more curious about the way you guys treat um, the retracements on, especially say something like the uh, 
any of the yen pairs where it's been a very strong movement to one direction and you wanted to trade a retracement um, like in this scenario, do you guys like to just set the stop like right on top of the last high or do you guys like to go all the way up to the weekly chart and take a look at that and say I'm going to use that as my stop? I mean, I'm sure it all depends, but I'd be curious to see, like, on this this trade. Um, maybe we could go over tomorrow and see what you end up deciding to do, if if you decided to actually go in on it. Um, I'd be curious to know if you had your stop set at um, right above this one, or if you wanted to go a little bit further. Or how about this, uh, Anthony? What happens if you have the, the stop at this high plus spread? But if it breaks that high, considering it's an uptrend, to go long at that point. Then you would have your stop set at the 145 level. 45. 145. Stop. 147. You would set your stop at 147? Oh, oh, sorry, Ham. So, yeah. So, if you did, uh, in fact, put the original stop there, and if the short were taking out, go long at that point, as soon as it's an uptrend and it's taking out the previous high, you're saying have the stop at this level now, is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes, yeah, because that was the previous swing, the high low, correct? Okay, cool. Uh, well, it's about to be time and uh, I think I have a couple good trading ideas for this week and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. This concludes the trading session with Anthony. Nice. Good job guys. Okay. Uh, with a show of hands, uh, who's bearish? Let's start from you. Ian. You bearish or bullish with the markets? Um. Market is mixed. Uh, with say the Dow, I'm bearish, um, but say with the Euro dollar, I'm bullish. Okay, uh, JP. Short term bearish, long term long. Anthony. I'm uh, I'm actually with Anne. Um, I was looking at what she went over and my thoughts earlier in the day, and I'm still bullish on the Euro. All right. In those pairs, so. Cool. All right, guys. Then you, that will be it. We'll say a good night, and you'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Thank you guys. How about you? Hey, yeah, how about you, Ronaldo? <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll like see you're what, you're what, you're what you guys are. Uh, we'll see the, uh, in the next couple of days, we'll see part of the survey. Okay, cool. Sounds like a good challenge. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay. All right, Thank you, guys. You. Yep. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.